What's up gamers? Welcome into another Kylobi build video. Today I have for you an amazing Nightblade PvP build. This is my favourite build to play at the moment and it's super strong. It has it all. It has huge damage, endless sustain and great survivability. If you want to see this build in action then be sure to check out my gameplay video and if you want the short version of this build be sure to check out my one minute build. I'll leave the link to both of those videos down in the description. But without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, welcome in everyone. We have a sweet Nightblade PvP build for you. Um, first of all, let's check out what's going on with the stats. Um, so, we first of all, we're a Dark Elf. I wouldn't recommend Dark Elf. I'd probably go Khajiit, but my Dark Elf looks really damn cool, so I'm going with Dark Elf. Mind you, plus the fire resistance is quite handy, so, you know, I would go Khajiit for the better crit, but Dark Elf is nice too. We have 20 points into health, 44 into stamina. We have 32,000 health, just under 16k magicka and 22k stamina. We have huge recoveries, which of course go higher. Uh, 1.2k stam recovery and 1.7k magicka recovery. Uh, weapon damage sits at about 5,300, of course, goes up with continuous and stuff like that. We have 31% crit and we have a huge amount of penetration. Uh, it's actually usually 15k when you're running forward or 16k. For some reason, it goes down when you go back because that Nightblade passive is weird. Um, and then 20, 21k, 22k resistances and 1.4k crit resist. Um, we're using the Astronaut Mundestone for extra magic recovery. That really helps with our heals and our cloaks and stuff, so that's nice to have. And we are using Jewels of Misrule food uh, for the increased stamina magic recovery. And we are a Vampire Stage 3, which of course is good for the Undeath passive. And the Strike from Shadows passive that gives us more damage when we leave stealth. Again, this is why a Dark Elf can come in handy, because it reduces the amount of flame damage taken or increases our fire resistance, sorry, where a vampire increases our flame damage taken. Um, and there's a lot of DKs about, and a lot of fire damage, so it's it's kind of nice, it's kind of handy. Okay, so let's get into the sets. Um, on the front bar, we have five pieces of Shattered Fate. All this does is just give us a huge amount of penetration at all time, just flat penetration with a sharpened axe as well. Um, that's why we're getting 16,000 penetration, which of course goes even higher as well when I show you what we've got going on. Um, so I have that on the battle axe, uh, the necklace, the ring, and the belt. I still need to upgrade the necklace. Um, so that's just on the front bar. That's the only time we need penetration on the front bar. So it's really useful to have. Um, absolutely stretched through people. So yeah, Shattered Fate's really good. Uh, and then on the back bar, we've gone with a bow and we've gone with Wretched Vitality. Um, this set is just incredible. It gives you magic recovery, stem recovery, weapon and spell damage. And then while in combat, applying a major buff or debuff grants you 260 magic and stamina recovery. And then while in combat, applying a minor buff or debuff gives you 130 magic and stamina recovery. So that's 390 recoveries just for applying major and minor buffs, which you do all the time anyway. So this is up all the time. Um, and it just gives you an insane amount of recovery. And then because you've got so much recovery, you can just spec the rest of your build into damage or survivability, whatever you need. Um, you can just have this on the back bar, which is what we've got. We've got it on the bow, the feet, the legs, and the hands. So you only have to worry about procking on the back bar and then you have it active at all times. Um, it's an incredibly good set. Um, so I recommend Red of Vitality. And then that leaves us a monster set. We've gone with Balogs. This is an incredibly good set for a Nightblade. Um, it adds weapon and spell damage, and then when you use an ultimate ability, you gain weapon and spell damage equal to the amount of total ultimate consumed, and physical and spell penetration equal to 23 times the amount. Um, so that adds a huge amount of damage as well. It's not just the amount of damage you use, it's the amount you consume. So if your ultimate costs 100, um, 
and you use the ultimate straight away, you'll get 100 weapon and spell damage. But if your ultimate costs 100, but you have 500 ultimates stored up, when you use that ultimate, you'll get 500 weapon and spell damage. So it's, uh, it gives you a huge amount and then just lets you follow up your ultimate with a huge amount of burst potential, um, which again is great for a Nightblade when you see what skills we've got going on. Um, and then that leaves one piece for a trainee. Uh, reinforced heavy chest piece, good for your armor and good for your max health as well. And then, of course, we're running a mythic, uh, the Mark in Ring of Majesty. Um, this adds weapon and spell damage plus armor for every set you're wearing at least three of. So we get the two piece bonus on both bars uh, of 200 weapon and spell damage and 2300 armor. So, yeah, I absolutely love this setup. There's no damaging proc set needed, so you don't need to set up any any proc set to go off when you want it to, um, you just have the damage flat straight away. Um, both Shattered Fate and Wretched Vitality are both crafted sets, so you can have it in any weights and traits you want. Um, but what I've gone for, I've gone for Sharpened on the front bar, and then Defending on the back bar for a little bit extra resistances, with a uh, Weapon of Spell Damage Enchant, and a Disease Damage Enchant on the front bar. Um, jewelry, we've gone Infused Weapon Damage. Uh, infuse weapon damage and infuse weapon damage all the way across. Um, you probably could change one to a swift because I am running um, three heavy, two medium, and two light. Um, probably don't need two light, but I do like the light passives because you get a bit of extra penetration from them. Um, it might be more beneficial to run one, one extra medium, so run three, three, one. Um, and I just I kind of liked it like this way. I built it like this, and it tends to work. So I'm not gonna if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so we've got heavy on the big pieces, on uh, the helmet, the chest, and the legs, and then we've got uh, medium boots and medium shoulders, and then light for the um, gloves and belt. Um, enchants. I've got a mix. I've got a couple of helves. I've got a couple of um, tri stat ones. Whatever you feel like you just need more stats of, just go for that. Um, having at least 32k health is always useful in PvP. Um, and traits, we've gone for reinforced on a couple of big pieces and some divines and well fitted. Probably, I, I liked one impen just in case, just in case we do get hit from any crits, but it's not the most important thing in the world these days. Um, so yeah, I really love this setup. Okay, so moving on to skills. Nothing crazy for Nightblade, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, first one we're using is Concealed Weapon. This is our spammable. Uh, deals 7,000 magic damage. If you strike an enemy from their flank, you set them off balance, which means you can then stun them with a heavy attack. And then when you leave Sneak, Invisibility, or cast Concealed Weapon while under the effects of Major Expedition, while in combat, you gain Mage and Berserk for 10 seconds increasing your damage done by 10%. That's a huge damage buff, uh, which we do get because we have Major Expedition on this build. Plus this skill also gives us Minor Expedition from being solid. So we've got both Major and Minor, which means we're moving pretty fast. Uh, next, we're going for Merciless Resolve. This is our huge burst damage. Um, this recently got a buff as well. So when slotted on either bar, you focus your lethal intent, causing your next light, uh, sorry, causing your light and heavy attacks to generate a stack of Merciless Resolve increasing your weapon spell damage by 60 up to 5 times and fully heavy, fully charged heavy attacks grant 2 stacks and then when you are at full stacks you can consume them all to fire a spectral bow dealing a huge amount of damage and healing for 56% of the damage done. Um, of course we know this is incredible, you don't need to use the skill anymore so it just starts generating stacks automatically. Um, so the way we do the setup is we, do, we buff up, we hit them with the ultimate, which procs our Balogs, and then we hit them with this, Merciless Resolve, once it's fully stacked, and you can hit people for well over 20k crits and absolutely melt them. So yeah, uh, pretty much a must have, must have on a Nightblade. Then we're going for Camo Hunter. Um, I probably could change this out because our cloak gives us our major savagery and prophecy, but I like it just for fighting other Nightblades. Um, it brings them out of stealth, could run to tech parts as well, but um, so yeah, you could flex this out for something else. 
I kind of like it there though. Plus you get a little bit of extra damage from the fighters guild passives. Um, but yeah, that's Camo Hunter. Uh, I execute Killer's Blade. This does huge amount of disease damage, then deals up to 400% more damage to enemies with less than 50% health, and heals you for 8,000 if the enemy dies within 2 seconds of being struck. So if you're close to dying but you think you can get a kill, hit them with this and uh, you can get a nice, nice heal from it. Um, and Rally, this is the reason I've gone two-handed instead of dual wield, I absolutely love this skill. It uh, gives you your major brutality and sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20%, and minor endurance, increasing your stem recovery by 15%, and it's a really nice heal. Uh, heals you for 3,972 health when Rally ends. The final heal is increased by 15% every one second up to a maximum of 300. So what I would usually do is I would, I would hit this first, then I would buff up with my back bar, run in, do whatever damage I needed to, and then cloak away and hit this. The reason, again, I have this is because when you use it, it doesn't take you out of stealth. So I was finding with dual wield, I was relying on other heals that immediately brought me out of cloak. Um, but this you can use and stay cloaked. So if you're about to die, you can cloak and then use this. And especially if it crits, you, you pretty much go back up to full health. And it doesn't bring you out of cloak either, so you can set up and do another burst. I absolutely love Rally, it's absolutely stacked skill. And then of course, for the ultimate, we're going for Incapacitating Strike. Hit an enemy, dealing a huge amount of disease damage and causing them to take 20% more damage from your attacks for 8 seconds. If cast with 130 ultimate or more, the enemy is stunned for 3 seconds. While slaughtered, you gain Reeve, which restores Magicka and Stamina when you deal with damage with light and heavy attacks. So that's really nice to have, especially when we combine this with Merciless Resolve. So if you get over 130 ultimate, you hit them with the you hit them with the in-cap, it stuns them, you get 130 damage plus some more penetration from Balogs, and you do an extra 20% more damage with your Merciless Resolve, and then you can execute them and kill them. Um, it's an incredible burst combo. Um, so yeah, that's the front bar. On the back bar, first set we're going for is Leeching Strikes. This causes your light and heavy attacks to heal you for 1713 and restore stamina for 20 seconds. Fully charged heavy attacks restore twice the value and you restore up to 4000 stamina when the effect ends. So this is just a really nice sustain skill. Uh, we just, you know, we hit this and we leave it um, and just gain stamina back whenever we need it. It's really nice. Um, I've gone for Race Against Time. You could swap this out for other things, but I think it's just too good not to have. Uh, you gain Major Expedition for 4 seconds and Minor Force for 20 seconds, increasing your movement speed by 30% and your crit damage by 10%, and it removes all snares and mobilizations. So we are hitting this, and then of course cloaking and hitting people with Concealed Weapon to get that Major Berserk buff. Um, so you could flex it out because we are running a bow, so you can dodge roll and get Major Expedition. But um, I like being able to have a, uh, a different alternative to get Major Expedition. This way we have one that costs Magicka and of course we can roll dodged using Stamina. So whichever one we need to do if we're low on one of the resources. Um, I just like it there. It, it's very nice. Um, and of course Shadowy Disguise. This is our cloak. This is the best survivability skill in the game if you ask me. Um, being able to turn invisible is just very useful. Um, and when your next direct damage attack used within 3 seconds will always be a critical strike. And of course we get major prophecy and savagery whilst it's slotted, which is why we probably don't need Camo Hunter. Um, but I tried swapping out some other stuff, but everything didn't just, it just didn't feel as good. So we're double stacking that, but you know, you can swap it out if you want to. Then we're going for Resolving Vigor, we all know this, huge heal over time, minor resolve for the resistances, um, a must have, but again this does heal you, when you cloak and use this it brings you out of out of cloak, so you got to be careful when using it, um, but yeah, really nice heal, and our burst heal, healthy offering. This gives you a huge heal and then gives you minor mending as well, increasing your healing done by 8%. And then for the back bar ultimate, we have Temporal Guard. We mainly have this just for the minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 5%. But it is a good, um, it's a good old shit button. If you're about to die, you can use this and reverse back 4 seconds and cloak away. Um, so it's really nice. 
So if I show you the basic skills, um, we're probably just going to use Rally first. Then we get our sustain, our major expedition so we can go cloak. And then we hit them. Hang on, let's get the... There you go. As you can see, the symbol changes when it, the stun one is active. And then we major expedition cloak so we get more damage from concealed weapon and then we hit them with the ultimate hit them with the bow and it's some bystanders dying here but you get the idea and then if they're still alive hit them with the execute um you could do a huge amount of damage you don't need to rely on a prop either and it's just absolutely incredible um i've been absolutely loving this build been playing it loads um so there we have it uh, last thing we need to get into is champion points. All the usual ones for the green, I've just got Rational, Liquid Efficiency, Steed's Blessing and Sustaining Shadows. Reducing the cost of the sneak is quite nice. And then just make sure you get Break Fall to reduce fall damage. Um, and then for the blue tree, we've gone for Ironclad, reducing damage taken by 6%. Um, fighting Finesse, increasing your crit damage and crit healing. Really good on Nightblade, we do loads of crits. Uh, focus Mending, increasing healing done, I really like this in PvP. And Backstabber, increasing crit damage done by 2% per stage against enemies you are flanking. So ideally you want to be attacking from behind quite often, extra 10% damage. Then in the red tree we've gone for Celerity, we need the extra movement speed, it's absolutely lovely. Um, Boundless Vitality, increasing our max health, good for PvP as well. Juggernaut, well under the effects of crowd control immunity, take 1% less damage per stage, so 5% damage reduction. And Relentlessness, being stunned or feared causes you to gain major protection for 3 seconds, reducing your damage taken by 10%, so that's good to have with our Temporal Guard on the back bar, which gives us 5% reduced damage. So there we have it. Um, yeah, I'm, I've been absolutely loving this build. Um, just tell you about the potions, I've mainly just been using the Health Magicka and Immovability potions. I love immov Immovability in PvP because it just lets you get your burst off without getting interrupted. Um, and then I do have a couple of detect ones as well. But there we go, that's the build. And that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said in the intro, this is my favourite build to play at the moment. I just can't get enough, especially with the Nightblade buffs that have come recently. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment if you see any improvements I could make. And don't forget to check out my streams over at twitch.tv slash Thank you everyone for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.